With the arrival of Megan's child and our newest nerd, the rest of us word nerds thought it was a good time to share some of our best parenting advice. So today we share with you our tips on how to raise a villain. <laughs> now if your child is to be a supervillain, you must name it something evil. Since the organization has heard that you are having a boy child, you might consider names like Damien or Pyro or Lazarus. You must also take into consideration whether they are going to have an anagram evil name or not. Depending if he does, you'll have to think about his middle name. For example, you might come out with something like Marvolo, which doesn't really make that much sense, but when you spell it out properly, it's a damn cool name. Every villain needs a proper lair, and what better place to start than with the nursery? Ideally, this lair will be underground, with damp stone walls, and a nice earthy smell with that hint of decay. But if that's not possible right now, never fear, we can still make an unwelcoming space for your little villain with the proper decor. The perfect place to start? All those Halloween decorations you have in storage. Break out the bats, the cobwebs, and the skeletons. And of course, you have to pick out the right color scheme. Black is the natural choice, but don't be afraid to use a pop of color. I recommend red to remind them of the blood of their enemies. Every good supervillain needs an evil monologue. Try skipping simple phrases like mama and dada and moving straight on to things like resistance is futile and don't make me destroy you. The key to masterminding any evil plot is finding good help, so it's never too early to start finding this kid the best possible henchman. If you're feeling like this kid's villain style is going to be more low-key, making their lives as awesome as possible, slowly taking over their social circle, then you're probably going to want to go for that classic duo of a couple of this kid's peers who don't ask too many questions and aren't afraid to just blindly follow orders. So we're talking like Jasper and Horace from 101 Dalmatians, or maybe Crab and Goyle. Basically, a duo that is more brawn than brain is going to do the trick just fine. Now, if this kid has bigger plans, bigger aspirations, and basically wants to take over the world, you're going to want to find one kind of henchman and just make a lot of them. So either flying monkeys, stormtroopers, anything along that line is going to get the job done. They say dress for the job you want, and everyone knows that when it comes to evil chic, black is the new black. It's never too early to start dressing your child in a color as dark as their soul. Of course, if you get tired of just plain old black, you can always accent. Gold and silver always make classy accent colors. A dark blue or red is also acceptable for an accent color, as long as it's not a bright color. You don't want to detract from the black, as long as it's like a blood red. No happy red, no red that makes you feel joy inside blood red. While he's young, be sure to invest in a multi-million dollar industry that he will obviously one day run. I'm thinking evil robots, because trust me, villain does not come cheap. Huge, huge, huge congratulations. This kid is definitely going to take over the world. You guys are having a kid! Good job! Make sure to set him on a rightful path because he's going to have to fight the chosen one at some point and you don't want him to be unprepared. Congrats on your tiny human! May all his villainous dreams come true. Congratulations, Megan. I really cannot wait to meet your little villain. Congratulations on your pink-sized evil genius. 